think I got a bandana on my shirt or something. Check that out, boys. That's what a muskie will do to you <laughs> if you're not careful. Hot diggity dog. This guy was not messing around. So as you guys could probably tell, this video was not recorded in August. You don't really need a fire in August. But we did revisit the Green River tailwaters in mid-November. I'm here with my lifelong buddy Dalton. He took me to a campsite the night before we went out and fished for muskie. We had an awesome night of camping, tried out some new foods, grilled next to the fire, had some white claws, it was a great time. We even went catfishing that night but didn't get anything, which leads us to the next day. All right, guys, we are back at the Green River Tailwaters. This is spillway out here. As you can see, this water is gushing today. Look at that, that's just, that is crazy. Today I'm throwing the Golden Shiner, Crop Duster in the Mama Bear size. Going for some musky today. Now with the water being this high, who knows? And I'm gonna go up here and try from the spillway, see if I can get a little bit. I'm gonna go try straight up in the spillway. I'm gonna walk up here and see if I can get one. Water is gushing pretty fast right now, so it's gonna be hard to keep this down in the current. I've got some fluorocarbon as a leader. And this is a two ounce bait, but it's a slow sinking bait. off unless I get something like a spoon start vertical jigging that current is just whipping right now oh I saw what you're talking about that shad man those are some big healthy shad to be honest this is about the right size all right just from what I'm seeing there's a there's like an eddy or something right here which is what they're schooling up in so i would just cast straight up there i'll come down here below you but try to work it on that line right here on this wall that's where they seem to be you got some are you hung okay uh try walking up the bank it might just be tension underneath the rock yeah they seem to be like right here you can see there's a little bit of dead water for them yeah that's where all the shad were anyway yeah, i guess just keep walking up and see if you can get it still hung Okay, you can try this out for a bit if you want. Just be careful, it's got a leader tied on, so it'll rip your finger if you're not yeah. careful. Well, oh, that's way up there. I think I got it. There we go. Oh. Come on, bass. I know a large mouth will hit that. Uh, I'm actually gonna walk back over to the car really quick grab a tackle box for us and we can start walking down the river for a little bit i'm gonna get in some top waters there's that like flat right there you know? yeah well we can walk almost all the way down to that bend down there okay. from here so that's what i did last time yeah i'm gonna get you a top water
I got the big guns out, son. No, I had to retie. I'm gonna try this out right here before we go down. That's amazing. First cast, I'm gonna run it up here. I might be able to make it. Got him, boys. Hopefully we can go today without losing any lures, especially this one. That's the only one I got to this. Mother. Two for two, baby. Let's go. I think it just came off, actually. Yeah, it did. Maybe not. There's a lip right here. You can kind of see where it's coming over. Don't make me walk back up there. Yeah, there we go. This is legit called the giant killer. All right, let's go ahead and move down. All right, let's go ahead and move down. I just wanted to try it out for a second. A little bit more chill water right here. Oh, they might be chilling there. All righty. We continue to move downstream for another two to 300 yards, casting pretty much the entire way, just working the shoals. Any place where we could see water bending over rock. After about an hour to an hour and a half, we hadn't caught anything, so we decided to start throwing Hail Marys. Dalton was generous enough to walk back to the vehicle and grab another setup. A setup which actually had an umbrella rig tied on. And thank God he did, because then, this happened. Oh my god. Guys, I think I might have just hooked into a muskie. Still got him. Oh my god. Get the net, please, if you don't care, dude. Whatever this is, this is good. I think this is a muskie. I think I saw its tail. Oh my god, boys. It could be a hybrid. Oh my God, dude. That's a musky. Get, get the net, go over to him if you can. That's a good musky, dude. Oh my God. That is a huge musky. Just let him get his head first. We wanna make sure we get his head in. That is a, that's my PB musky right there. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> that is huge. You got his head? Okay, just hold on, hold on. We kind of got him beached here. Oh my God. Here, here, here. Just come get, the, yeah, yeah, come get the grippers. Let's see. Come here, big guy. Try to beach him. He is barely hooked right now. Oh my god. Boys. <laughs> that is a stud. <laughs> Dear God, dude. Um, is there any way we can hold him in the net for a second? He is huge and I don't want him to thrash. Yeah. Oh my god, got him on the umbrella rig too. I'll hold him up here in a second. Jesus man. <laughs> that right there. Oh, dear God. Man, what a stud of a muskie. I'm trying to get him in the light. Can you give me a little slack? Oh, my God. That's probably like a 25, 30 pound muskie right there. Oh, man. My legs are shaking, dude. Uh, can you get the grippers, please? 
and that we're gonna put it in his mouth. That way we can get him some water. Just put it right there on his lip and clamp down. Okay, you got it? Oh my God, boys, check that out. I'm sorry I didn't get the hook set, but man, I hope you can understand why I started recording. Look at that, boys. <laughs> that is so sick. That's my second ever musky. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of him, okay? Yeah. We just got the, look at, that's how much he was hooked. I know. We just had him on tension. <sighs> okay, if you don't care, I'll take, take over. Can you take a picture for me, please? Absolutely. Oh, I'm gonna get him some water while you're getting that up too, okay? Oh my God, boys. You gotta love you some musky, baby. Check that out. That's my first ever Kentucky musky. Dear God, what a... Well, he tried death rolling on me. Thank God for the grippers, man. Woo! Okay. Take a picture for me. Dude, he's so happy. Just take a picture really quick if you don't care. Okay, check that out, boys. That's what a muskie will do to you. <laughs> if you're not careful. Hot ah, diggity dog. This guy was not messing around. All right, let's go ahead and weigh him really quick. Ignore the blood if you guys don't mind. <laughs> I'm just excited for the muskie. Let's see it. Is it on? Hey bro, we're gonna let you go. I'm gonna go ahead and let him go, okay, actually. Okay. He's ripped up his jaw, and I'm bleeding, boys. We'll never know how big this muskie was, but I'm gonna guess like 30, 30 pounds, dude. I'm gonna go ahead and put him back in the water. Check that out. What a beaut of a muskie. He'll let us know when he's ready to go. Well, this is what we were after today, boys. <laughs> now, I think it was gonna go this good? Not really, if I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I think we're gonna send him on his way. He's got his fins going. You ready, buddy? Get on out of here, buddy. Wow, what a log. He's just getting his bearings. You can see the battle scars on his back and everything. That is insane. He's just chilling. Right there, boys, is a log of a muskie. Damn, he ripped me up pretty good, boys. I'm not gonna lie. Go on, big guy. Swim off, I know you're getting your bearings. That was insane. You're good, buddy. That fight probably just exhausted him, you know? And there he goes. Wow. <laughs> Golf claps all around, lads and gents. That was insane. That was mind blowing. I'm not going to lie. Now here comes the fun part. After every fishing mini series that I do, I'm going to break it down into a summary. And this one is a straight up banger. Starting off, we're going to do the best lures of the Kentucky Send. Coming in at number three is going to be the Bobbin Frog. I didn't get any fish on it, but I got some bites on it. Plus, I didn't have any lures besides the Bobbin Frog to put on this list because we only got bites on two other lures. And that brings us to number two. Number two is definitely going to be the Umbrella Rig. A sheer Hail Mary, a sheer desperation cast kind of thing. The Umbrella Rig brings us my first Kentucky Muskie, which was just an absolutely mind-blowing experience. And that brings us to the top lure, the MVP of the Kentucky Send, the bird. The Chase Bait Smuggler in the white cockatoo color got it done for us this trip. We caught our first fish of the Kentucky Send on this lure, and we also caught the biggest largemouth of the trip. In fact, the last bass that we actually caught was caught on the bird. It was the only lure that got us consistent bites throughout the trip, which is crazy because it was basically in the dead heat of summer. So shout out to the bird for being the MVP of the Kentucky Send. Now I'm going to talk about some of my favorite places that I visited over the course of the Kentucky Send. Number three is definitely the Falls of the Ohio. What a beautiful place. I'm surprised I didn't catch anything, but like I said, it was in the heat of summer. So I'm sure most of the big fish were down in the deeper holes because it was pretty shallow when I visited. I was able to wade pretty much everything while I was there. Regardless, a beautiful place and I know I will definitely be back to. Number two is the private pond. Now I can't tell you where this pond is actually located, but I can say that if you ever get the chance to fish it, do it. This pond is crazy. It got my first ever Kentucky largemouth. It got us a ton of bites, and it gave us a great start to the Kentucky Send. I was hooked to that place the first day that I ever visited it. And yes, pun intended. And number one, the best location that we visited on the Kentucky Send has to go to 
the Green River Tailwaters. This place is a beautiful, easy to fish spillway and obviously full of fish. It's notorious for musky and I can kind of see why now. But don't worry if you're not into musky, not into the old toothy critters. There's plenty of bass in there and just an all round awesome fishery. You can bet your bottom dollar that I'll be there again someday. And now we come to distance traveled. Over the entirety of the Kentucky Send, we traveled a distance of over 882 miles, almost a thousand miles. And over that distance, we got two different species being largemouth and muscalunge. A good old musky. So I think it goes without saying, but I'm going to anyway. This was a crazy mini-series, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I definitely plan on doing more mini-series in the future, because this one was just so much fun to put together. It was a lot of work, a lot of distance traveled, obviously, but it totally, totally paid off. Before I go, I'd also like to mention that the 12 Days of Fishmas is right around the corner, guys. So make sure you got your popcorn ready, because trust me, she's going to be a binger. I also used some custom music in this video, as well as the 12 Days and many, many other videos. So if you guys would like to check that out, I'll have links in the description below. And I'm about to drop another album. The release date is TBD. I'm shooting for Christmas, but... I've got a lot of work to do before Christmas rolls around. But if you want to hear stuff that I've already dropped, then be sure to check that link in the description below. So guys, if you enjoyed the Kentucky Send, a fishing miniseries, and you want to see more, then be sure to hit the like button below, comment, rate, subscribe, do what you guys do, and I'll see you guys in the next one.